Hello, everybody. How are you? I hope you're all doing okay. I hope you had a nice weekend. I um, hope you did some something interesting. Uh, I also hope that you are continuing to study English. Uh, we're in our uh, third week of uh, confinement, um, but we must continue. All right. So anyway, let's get started for today. All right. Now today we're going to be uh, on the pupils book in page um, 60 right here. Okay. Uh, now it's grammar today. We're going to be doing something called relative clauses. Now you may have done this before. Okay. Now um, it's not difficult. Okay. Uh, once you get the hang of it, but I am going to explain all the sort of the theory of the grammar. Okay. So it's kind of, uh, it can be kind of complicated. All right, but uh, try and understand, and then once you start doing the exercises, you'll uh, it, it'll come to you quite easily. Okay. Um. Anyway, let's have a look. So today is relative clauses. All right. So there's uh, a few sentences. Okay, from uh, the article on page fifty nine. All right, we're not going to look at that now, but we're just going to um, look at some examples of relative clauses. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, oh, here's the article. Okay, so, okay, let's have a look. It says, um, remember the anchovy and tomato pizza that you created? Okay, so here is an example of a defining relative clause, the anchovy and tomato pizza that you created. All right, now it says they have two options. It says this relative clause, right, which is this part here, identifies exactly which thing or person we are talking about, or this relative clause gives us extra information about the thing or person we are talking about. Well, in this case, remember the anchovy and tomato pizza that you created, right? It's a specific one. So this relative clause identifies exactly which thing or person we're talking about. And let's have a look at this second one. Okay, so it says Remy, who lives in the USA, is just sixteen. Okay, so this is the this is the the relative clause here, who lives in the USA. Now, is is this one? Is this to identify exactly what we're talking about, or is it giving us extra information? All right, this is giving us extra information because what we want to say is Remy is just sixteen, right? But the the information here, Remy, who lives in the USA, okay, it's just a little bit extra. It's not necessary always, okay. So these are so this is an example of a defining relative clause and a non-defining relative clause, okay. Um, Let's have a look here, right? Before we uh, before we go to our notebooks, the same. A relative clause tells us more about something. It starts with which for things, who for people, that for people, and things, who's for possession, where for places, and when for time. Okay. A defining relative clause identifies the thing or person we are talking about. Without the relative clause, we don't know who we are referring to, and the sentence may not make complete sense. All right, the pizza that I made was delicious, for example. In a defining relative clause, we don't use a comma and we can use that instead of who or which. We can also leave out the relative pronoun when it is the object of the clause. All right, for example, the pizza I made was delicious. In a non-defining relative clause, we already know which thing or person we're talking about and the relative clause just gives us information, extra information. Pizza, which is originally from Italy, is one of my favorite dishes. Okay, so this information is not necessary. In a non defining relative clause, we use a comma and we can't use that instead of who or which. We can't leave out the relative pronoun. Okay, now that may sound a little bit complicated, all right, um, but hopefully I can clarify things. All right, so let's go to our notebook. Okay. And I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so we're going to go to our notebook. All right. Now, um, so the title is Relative Clauses. Okay. And the uh, uh, date is Tuesday, the 7th of April, 2020. Now, um, so I've just put sort of the general rule here. We use relative clauses to say who or what we are talking about. Okay. 
So like it said before, this is, um, this is sort of like a phrase we use in a sentence to specify what we're talking about. Okay. Now let's look at this example. Uh, my sister is the girl who has long blonde hair and green eyes. Okay. So my relative clause starts here, right? The girl who has long blonde hair and green eyes. Now, this information here is necessary because uh, otherwise you don't really understand who I'm talking about, right? If I don't have this, I just have the phrase, my sister is the girl, right? Who knows which girl, right? So it's very, we don't know exactly who we're talking about, right? So we use the relative clause, right? Which is here to be, uh, to be more specific, okay? Now, if you notice, um, the, uh, the relative, the relative clause here, this, it starts with a word, right? With a, uh, with a pronoun. Okay. So here we've used the pronoun who, okay. Because I'm talking about a person, All right? And then I, uh, and then I sort of carry on the sentence afterwards. Okay. So that's how they work. Now, um, depending on what we're talking about, we use different pronouns. Okay, so here are the different pronouns we can use depending on what we talk about, okay? So we use who for people, which for things, where for places, when for times, and whose for possessives, okay? Makes sense, right? So, uh, and I've given you an example for each one, okay? So with who, right? So say, that's the person who I saw in the park, okay? with which the sport which I like the most is football. Uh, for places, that's the place where I was born. Okay. Um, we use when for times, that was when I had long hair. Right. And who's for possessives. That's the man whose brother is a criminal. Now remember if we use whose, Right. Afterwards, we always use a noun. Right. Whose brother? The the man whose brother. The man whose car. The man whose house. Right. And then we use the the the, the rest of the clause. Okay. So remember with whose, um, because it's possessive, we have to use a noun afterwards. Whereas the others, okay. After we use the pronoun, we just go straight to like a normal sentence. Okay. Straight to the clause. All right. So this is kind of how we use them. All right, so you can copy these, copy this all down in your notebook. All right. Um, now I'm going to break down some of the rules. Okay. Now there are a lot of rules, but um, like I said, um, just try to understand as we go along, and then once we start practicing, um, it should come. Uh, it should come a bit easier to you. All right. So there's two types of relative clauses. Okay, that we looked at in the examples here. Okay, two types. All right, now the first one is a defining relative clause. So this is a relative clause which is necessary to understand the sentence, okay? So that's like the first example that we looked at here. Remember the entropy and tomato pizza that you created, okay? So um, if we don't have this part of the sentence, right, then it doesn't make any sense, right? So I'll give you an example. That's the place where I was born, okay? Um, so if I, do, if I don't have this part of the sentence, if I just say that's the place, right? The sentence doesn't really make any sense. I'm not really saying anything, right? That's, I have to specify, that's the place where I was born, all right? So we need this information to understand the sentence. Now, if it's a defining relative clause, we can sometimes use that instead of who or which, okay? So instead of saying the person who you were talking to is my sister, I can say the person that you were talking to is my sister. Okay. Um, so there's a little rule there. And then the other rule is that um, if the, uh, we can omit the relative pronoun if it is the object of the clause. Okay. Uh, and I'll give you an example here. The person you were talking to is my sister. Okay. Now here, um, right, my sister is the object here. So, you were talking to my sister, right? She's the object. So because she's the object, 
right? I don't have to use who. I don't have to say the person who you were talking to is my sister, okay? Um, so yeah, so we can so we can sometimes leave it out. But for now, I would say just until you understand it, don't worry about leaving it out. Just just put it in all the time whenever you can. Okay, so that's a defining relative clause. So the main thing to remember is if it's defining, right? It means it's necessary, right? We need that information. Okay. Now the other type is a non-defining relative clause. All right. So it's uh, similar except here, a non-defining relative clause uh, is used to give extra information and are not necessary to understand the sentence. Okay. So this was like the second example that we looked at at the beginning. Remy, who lives in the USA, is just 16. Okay. Now, the, the part that says who lives in the USA, right, that's not necessary for the sentence. Okay. Let's look at this example. Right. So I put my brother, who lives with me, is a doctor. Okay. So this part is my relative clause. Right. And I notice here that I use commas, right, to separate it. I use commas. Right. If it's if it's non-defining, I don't use commas, but if it's, uh, if it's defining, sorry, I don't use commas, but if it's non-defining, right, if the information is not necessary, I use commas because it's like adding something extra, okay? If I, don't, if I don't write this in the sentence, the sentence still makes sense, right? I can say my brother is a doctor, right? I'm giving you the information, all right? It makes sense, but I can give you extra information, right, with a non-defining relative clause. Okay, so a couple of rules for non-defining relative clauses is you must use commas, right? We cannot use that, okay? So like here, we could use that instead of who or which. If it's non-defining, we cannot do that. And if it's non-defining, we cannot omit the pronoun, right? Like we did here, right? So we cannot omit the pronoun. So those are, those are the main rules for relative clauses, okay? So like I said, it's quite a lot to take in, all right? But uh, hopefully now we can get some practice and uh, you can understand, all right? So make sure you copy all of this down in your notebook, all right? Okay, uh, all finished? All right, let's have a look at the exercises, okay? So we'll do the exercises on page 60 altogether, and then I'll leave you to do the workbook on your own, okay? So let's have a look, so here, we have to choose the correct relative clause, right? So we've, each, we've got two options, okay? We have to choose the correct one. So let's do this all together. All right, so um, let's look at number one. It says, my dad, who does most of the cooking, makes great curries. And the second one, my dad, who does most of the cooking, makes great curries, okay? So which one is correct? Okay, well, let's have a look. This one here, it doesn't have commas, okay, which would imply that it's, uh, that it's sort of it's necessary information. And here it does have commas, right? So here it's like it's extra information. So is this information here, my dad, who does most of the cooking? Is that part, is that necessary for the sentence? Okay, or is it extra information? Okay, the correct version is this one, right? It's extra information, it's non-defining, right? My dad, who does most of the cooking, makes great curries, right? But I can just say, my dad makes great curries. Okay, so that's, that's the correct version, all right? Non-defining with commas. Let's look at number two. The French dish that I absolutely love is creme brulee, all right? The French dish, dish that I absolutely love is creme brulee. Okay, so is this information necessary? Okay, can I say the French dish is creme brulee? That doesn't really make sense. So it is necessary. So the answer should be the first one, all right? No commas, it's defining, okay? And we need it to understand the sentence. Number three. I've been finding out about Remy Smith, who is a young Chinese American chef. Or, uh, right, so that's, that's non-defining, so that's if it's extra information. And this is, if I've been finding out about, uh, sorry, I've been finding out about Remy Smith, who is a young Chinese American chef, right? So here, because there's no comma, 
that would mean is necessary, right? It's a defining clause. Which one is correct? The first one, okay? The information here is not necessary, all right? I've been finding out about Remy Smith, okay? You can just say this, but this is extra information, right? So we need a comma. It's non-defining. Okay, and let's have a look here. This is the restaurant where we ate last week, all right? So that's defining, no commas, so it's necessary. And here, this is the restaurant where we ate last week with a comma, which would mean it's not necessary. Is this information necessary or not? It is necessary, right? This is the restaurant where we ate last week, right? If we don't have that information, all we say is this is the restaurant, okay? It doesn't tell us anything. Well, hey, look at that, 100%, just like always. Let's continue. Okay, so, um, so again, right, we've got some sentences and now, we, you have to choose which is the correct relative pronoun to use, okay? So it's very easy, just remember, um, which is for, for things, where is for places, when is for times, who is for people, whose is for possessions, okay? And that we can use instead of who or which, if it's, excuse me, if it's a defining, uh, if it's a defining relative clause. Let's have a look. Okay, so. Let's look at number one, okay? We'll do it all together. The meal mm, you made for us last night was delicious, okay? Um, so, the meal, so that's a thing, so I can use which or that, okay? The meal, which, okay. Number two, do you remember the time mm, you put sugar in the soup instead of salt? Okay, because it's a time we have to use when you remember the time when um if anybody's interested in music remember the time is a good song by michael jackson um number three let's have a look remy smith now that's a person so we have to use who oh no sorry my mistake it's possessive because this is a this is a noun show remy smith whose show is called cook time with remy loves cooking Okay, so that should be whose, right? Because it's possessive. Um, number four, this is the restaurant. Okay, a restaurant is a place. So I'm going to put where we celebrated my mom's birthday. Number five, anchovies. Little fish. Anchovies, mm, I love, go really well on pizza. Anchovies is a thing, so we're going to use which. And number six, are there any celebrity chefs? Okay, a chef is a person. You can say, who you admire. Okay. Let's see, that's pretty easy. Okay. Fantastic, 100%. Brilliant. Okay. Let's continue. Now, this... This is the this is the interesting exercise, okay? So this is where you're going to have to use your brains a little bit more. All right? So what we have here um, is, so it's giving you two sentences, all right? And what we have to do is combine them, combine them using the relative clause, okay? So it's like two bits of information, okay? Two sentences, we make them one sentence, okay? And we use the relative clause, all right? So let's have a look, all right? The first one, Jamie Oliver, the British chef. Uh, Jamie Oliver was born in Essex. Right, so that's one sentence. One bit. Essex is a county in England. Okay, so I'm going to put this together, right, using a relative clause, just like this. Right, so my essential information is here. Jamie Oliver was born in Essex, comma, which is a county in England. All right, it's because it's extra information here. So we just put a comma and then choose the relative clause, the relative pronoun. Okay. And you can link the sentences like this. Okay. Let's have a look at the next one. He first worked in the kitchens of a restaurant. Uh, his parents owned the restaurant. Okay. So he first worked in the kitchens of a restaurant. It's the first bit of information. And uh, his parents owned the restaurant. So let's combine the sentences. He first worked in the kitchens of a restaurant. 
that or which his parents owned. Okay, which his parents owned. Okay, so here is no comma because it, uh, because it's actually all uh, necessary information for the sentence, right? It's all it's all part of the same sort of bit of information. So that's necessary information, right? So no commas. Let's have a look at this one. His many cookery shows have appeared on TV around the world. Okay, so that's the first bit of information. They include Jamie's school dinners and Jamie at home. All right. So again, we're going to put these sentences together. So his many cookery shows, right? And then I'm going to add in my extra information, okay? Which include, so I put a comma and I say, which include Jamie's school dinners and Jamie at home. And then, uh, have appeared on TV around the world, right? So this is the sentence, this is the information that's necessary. This is extra information, right? So we use that with a comma. His many cookery shows, which include Jamie's school dinners and Jamie at home, have appeared on TV around the world. Okay, let's look at the next one. Jamie's school dinners tried to improve the quality of the food. Right, and then it says the food is served in schools. Right, so that's all necessary information, right? Because not only like we have what he's uh, what he's done, and then the information about the food that he was uh, trying to improve. Okay, we have to specify. So uh, Jamie's school dinners tried to improve the quality of the food uh, of food, which right food thing is served in schools uh, number five it was hard to get uh it was hard to get pupils to eat well right my first bit of information the pupils didn't like eating vegetables okay so this is our main bit of information this here is extra information okay uh oh, well let's have a look yeah so uh it was hard to get pupils all right and then uh and then we put in our extra information who didn't like eating vegetables to eat well now if you've noticed before we do the last one if you've noticed when it's a uh when it's when the information is necessary okay um we it's it's sort of like the the second sentence, okay, we just, all we do is just, uh, we were replacing sort of the, 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 the subject, okay, with the, with the relative pronoun, okay, and it follows the same order. But if it's extra information, right, then we take, if you know, like, like here, for example, like the one we've just done, right, then what we do is we take that information and we, and we put it in the middle of the main sentence, right? So, it was hard to get pupils to eat well, okay? So the extra information is about the pupils, right? So I'm gonna put the extra information here in the middle of the sentence, right? So just a little difference between the defining and non-defining when it comes to this exercise. Uh, let's have a look. Number six, in the end, he was successful and the government agreed to spend more on school meals, okay? So that's the first bit of information. Then the government pays for school meals. All right, so let's put these together. All right, so it says, in the end, he was successful and the government, all right, now this is the extra information bit, so we're gonna insert it here, right? The government, which, uh, uh, which pays for school meals, right, and comma, and now we can continue, uh, agreed to spend more on them, right? Spend more on them and we can say them because we've already mentioned school meals. Okay, so Excellent work guys. All right, so this is uh, how we do relative clauses. Okay now If you don't get it perfectly straight away Don't worry. Okay. It does take practice, right? And we will practice more. Okay, but let's try So what I want you to do now, okay now that you have all of this finished is 
go to your workbook, all right? And we have very similar exercises, okay? Um, what I like you to do actually is uh, don't do exercise two, okay? Um, we'll just keep it simple, right? So just do exercise one and exercise three. So exercise one, like we did in the pupils book, all right? Choosing the correct pronoun, who, which, when, where, whose, okay? So again, um, if you don't remember, just have a look. So this is like exercise two here, okay? So you can go back and have a look here, all right? Uh, at that exercise to help you out, all right? So do exercise one. And then uh, skip exercise two, so don't do exercise two. And then you can do exercise three here, all right? By the way, this is page uh, 46, okay? Uh, which should be unit six, uh, grammar one here, okay? Exercise three, so exactly the same as the exercise we've just done, okay? You have two sentences and you have to link them together uh, using a relative clause, okay? using it too close. So uh, you can pause the video and you can do these exercises, okay? And then when you're finished, I will give you the answers. All right. Have you finished? Okay, so here are your answers. Exercise one. Okay, so I'm just gonna put them all up here. Okay, so if it says two of them, it means you can use either, right? So you can, here you can use either which or that, okay? So have a look, all right? Um, see how many you got correct, all right? Correct any mistakes. And when you have made mistakes, try and understand why, um, why you made the mistake and why the correct answer is correct, okay? So have a look at your answers, okay? Correct. Hey, 100%, just like always. All right, and then exercise three, okay? So I'll just give you your answers. Okay, so well, we'll go through them one by one. All right, uh, our local food festival started four years ago. I can remember it. Oh, this is a difficult one. Uh, I can remember the year when our local food festival started. Okay, and that's a, that was a bit of a difficult one. It's a bit of a tricky one. Uh, don't worry if you got that wrong. Let's have a look at the next one. The food festival was on last weekend. The food festival was really good. Okay. So that one, the food festival, which was really good, was on last weekend. All right. That one's a bit more, that one's a bit easier. Next one. I watched a celebrity chef. He made a delicious curry. Yeah. I watched a celebrity chef who made a delicious curry. Okay. Number four, there were lots of stalls. Stalls are the, the places in the market, the little bits in the market where they sell things. There were lots of stalls. The stalls sold different kinds of food. Okay, so put them together. There were lots of stalls which sold different kinds of food. Um, number five, there was a pop-up restaurant. You could eat Italian food there. All right, so put them together. There was a pop-up restaurant where you could eat Italian food. And the last one, uh, the organizers say it's been the most successful year ever. The organizers worked very hard. All right, put them together. The organizers who worked very hard say it's been the most successful year ever. Okay. Remember to, um, to use the commas, right, where they're necessary. So have a look. Uh, correct any mistakes, okay? Um, and then, yeah, have a look at the, have a look at the answers and... Um, look at the ones which are defining, right? Which don't have commas and the ones which are non-defining, which do have commas, okay? And understand, right, uh, if there's commas, why this information uh, is like extra information. And then in these ones, why the information is necessary, okay? But anyway, okay, so hopefully you got those all correct. Yay, all right. Um, make sure you correct any mistakes that you have in your book. And again, try and understand your mistakes, right? Understand why. Okay. Now, hopefully you are able to understand relative clauses. All right. Um, now we will have a, a class on Thursday, which will be a live class. So you can actually ask me questions about it and I can uh, give you some more explanations. All right. Um, but yeah, so on Thursday we, we'll actually get to talk to each other which will be great. 
Um, anyway, okay. Um, so just to recap, all right, so we should have uh, exercise one, two, and three on this page, all right? We should have all of this copied in the notebook, okay? And we should have uh, on page six, 46 in the workbook, uh, the grammar section exercises one and three, okay? Very good, everybody. Well, uh, so that's the end of the class. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you guys on Thursday, okay? Um, but yes, okay, so that's it. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.